this is Midland, Midland Productions, and today with me I am Steamtronics Productions. Hello, thank you for having me. As always. Anyway, uh, we are today. I won't be the one hosting this. My friend Steamtron, uh, Steamtronics Productions will be hosting this. He is going to be talking about a Norwegian steam locomotive. I am. The steam locomotive that I'll be talking today is a not very well known one. That is oh. the um, that is a narrow gauge tank engine. Can I just ask, what is the wheel arrangement? The wheel arrangement is a Malay class, so it's a BB arrangement. So um, two sets of four driving wheels. Hmm. Okay, that sounds okay. Fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> it's, anyway, carry on. Um, yeah. It's um, well, first of all, it, it was a Decaville Malay, and its name was. Um, Norwegian, it was Björnen which it translates to the bear the, the railway it was built for the um, Nastunta Ulf railway had a habit of naming their engines after animals <laughs> wait so what so wait a minute they, they had a habit for naming their engines after animals yes so what was this one this one was, um, like I said, just now it was called uh, Björnen, which is uh, translates to the bear. A bear? Mm-hmm. Well, uh, any Americans here, please do not shoot your bears. Anyway, carry on. <laughs> <laughs> right. So it, um, the engine was built uh, in 1893 by Atelier's two buys in Belgium. And got the works number of eight hundred ninety one with its two siblings, which were also built for the same railway. Mm. And um, yeah. so they were shipped off to to Bergen and uh, they arrived in eighteen ninety four in uh, Ulf Harbour and they were given, and they had, um, what's it called? The, um, basically, what, it's a bit like the Garrick, like where the wheels are able to to move. Like the bogey, they're basically like bo- running on bogies to handle the tight curves. Mm. We, we, can, we can talk about this another time, if you want. No, 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 it's fine, it's alright, it's fine. Okay. And, uh, yeah, they they basically um, their job this job was basically running passenger and passenger goods and livestock trains. So, up and down like, the railway. so basically a mis- it's basically a mixed traffic. Basically, yeah. Ooh, really nice. And um, however, they weren't that strong. Because uh, I heard a story, which is true, because the guy witnessed it. Uh, it. The engine stalled on a hill outside of where the museum today stands. So right. it stalled on a hill, and all the passengers had to get out and walk up the hill as the engine struggled up with a few empty coaches. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. And after all that, I don't know if this is the same. If don't know if this was the same year, but at some at some point in 1920, it developed a hole in its boiler. It went under. It went unnoticed, and the boiler ended up exploding. Oh, yeah, in the station. Oh, okay. Yes. Yeah. Parts flew everywhere. However, nobody died, miraculously. I, th- I guess the lucky lamp was involved. <laughs> I mean, it did have a lamp. It did have a lamp. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, all that happened was basically someone broke their arm. Like, a fireman broke their arm. 
Oh. That was it. Very nice. Yeah. And finally, in 1935, uh, due to a lot of competition on the from the road, the railway ended up closing. And Björnen had the honour of pulling the final train. Fair, 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 fair enough. <laughs> yeah, okay. and um, the and there is footage of the final run, and you can see that it was quite a tragic day for the railway. Mm. When can I can I just ask? When was of this engine? When was this engine built? This engine was built in 1893. Huh. So, hundred and something years ago, I don't know. Hundred and thirty-one years ago, is that fair? Fair enough. Yeah, some somewhere like a, yeah, so somewhere between a hundred and thirty. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, can I can I just ask how? Yeah. So on its railway, how mm-hmm. um how okay uh what how many miles was it? Like how big was it, uh, its now gauge railway? Um, it was. It was twenty six point three kilometers long. Hmm. Which is sixteen point thirty four miles. Oh. Which is rather a long distance for an Algier uh, driveway in Norwegian. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Norway. Okay. Uh, what was this? What was the top speed? About fifteen miles an hour, I think. That's that's fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can see why this place failed. I, I can understand why it failed. By the way, um, if anyone from the preservation team are listening to this, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, uh, may, may, I, may I just ask, though? Um, yeah. So, when the boiler exploded, what happened to the engine? Did it get rebuilt? Yes, it did. It, um, it's assumed that it got... It um, got the shunt of shame all the way up back to the um, workshop at Oost, uh, which was all the way on the other side of the railway. And it was probably fixed up and it was back in working condition probably a week or so afterwards. Hmm. Fair enough. And, um, yes, yeah, so after the railway closed, they... The engines were sent to, were sold off to um, the scrap merchant, uh, Tislestar. Huh. And um, they were all sadly um, cut up. And room, and there are rumours that there are actually photos of the engines being cut up. Ooh. But I've yet to seen any photos of of them. So if anyone listening to this knows uh, has any copies of those photos, please let me know where I can where I can find them. Mm. Because it'll be quite interesting to see. Anyway, this particular engine was kind of saved from scrap in a way. It boiler was bought by the um herring company on Ulf called Bergen Packing Company mm. and it worked as a stationary boiler. Oh yeah. So um, yeah for many years it worked there until one day the factory closed and the boiler was abandoned. So that's what but that was when someone uh, removed the whistle from it. And then they had it for many years until they one day donated it 
to the Ulfborn um, Railway Museum at Stend back in 2008. And also, the locomotive has uh, a few parts that have also been saved, such as the buffer beam and the lamp that was on the smoke box. Hmm. All right. And and um. When, can I can I just ask where was course. this engine built? Belgium. Belgium. Yes. Uh, Ashley has two eyes. For being for I'm being probably... a Malay for being a Malay engine, I thought it would be built in somewhere in America, like Baldwin or something, <laughs> and then sent no. overseas to Norway. Yeah. However, um, although uh, despite this engine sadly not being around anymore, mm. there is one. He has one surviving brother. And that is, um, and that is um, the engine Lastable in Maria Freire, Sweden, which I've seen. And believe me when I, when I tell you guys, when you see it in person, it's quite a shock. You're like, whoa, it's real. Mm-hmm. And yeah. yeah. Like, and if you guys want to know more, then. I don't know, like, contact Stend Railway Museum or go there in person. I don't know. We'll, we'll put the way we'll put the railway museum in the link in the description, so you can know more about That's the cool. railway, uh, the railway held the heritage railway and the engine itself. Yep, I would really suggest going to it if you're uh, in Bergen and on that side of town, because it's uh, really quite a nice little little line. Oh, wow. Doesn't have any steam, however. It only has a diesel, but that's because all their, all their original steam engines were scrapped. Can I, can I just ask, how... Yeah? What was the, what was the gauge for the now, now gauge track? Um, it, it was originally meant to be uh, 700 millimetres, which is... Um, um, 70 centimeters, but mm. they decided to change it to 750 because I think they fa- um, found that it was difficult to get rolling stock in 700. Yeah, yeah, I can see, I can understand why. And um, one last thing about the railway is that it wasn't kept in that good condition because they had massive budget cuts. Like they had to, like the coal that they were using looked like something right out of eight freight. When it was just dust in the mm. in the bunkers. Yeah, yeah. And they had loads of derailment. Can I can I just ask as well? What was the attractive effort on this engine? Oh, good, uh, good question. However, it, um, I'm not quite sure, but it did weigh twelve tons. Oh yeah. But the attractive effort, I'm not too sure because uh, I don't think. Um, the preservation group have that information, strangely. Okay. I can look. Um... Well, should we end it there? If you, if you uh, have, yeah. if you have no more information on this lovely engine, I'm afraid I don't have any have any more. So um yeah. Well but oh oh also also um Oh no. Oh sorry, sorry. Um before I go um I forgot to mention that the nameplates like the original nameplates and lamp are preserved. Oh. 
and they're looking absolutely beautiful. Are they are they like love? Are they actually like lovingly restored? Yeah, oh. yeah, they they look like they've just been taken off the engine. Wow. Yeah. Speechless, I am quite speechless. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right, so uh, yeah. we'll, we'll we'll call it a foot stand, shall we? That, that's it. Sounds good. Good. Thank well, you so much for having me on uh, the podcast. I had a very nice time. Of course. And yeah, and thank you all, all you viewers for watching. I think I think they I think they've enjoyed it. I think you now listening to this podcast. I think all of you should go to this. Uh, by the way, whenever you're in Norway, I certainly will, if I ever want to leave the country. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, thank you for coming on here, Steam Tron Reductions. My pleasure, thank you for having me on here. Oh, no problem. And we'll hopefully see you all another time. Or another lifetime. <laughs> Bye, guys. Anyway, to loop.